Steve and all of England fans are describing that as embarrassing. Do you agree? I think that we're incredibly disappointed with the performance. I think immense credit to the French team who um, their power and, and pace and class showed. Um, and I think right now it shows where the gap is. And I said before the game it was a formidable challenge. And and it, 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 it turned out that it was they played exceptionally well. We played poorly and we will we gotta learn from it and be better. Are you surprised though? How big that gap appears. Well, I think that's the key element is we we know where we are and and we've got to show just how much work we've got to do here. We 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 play Ireland next week, so we've gone from playing the second best team in the world and we showed they showed just just how much better they are than than, than where we currently are and then and next week we play Ireland the, the best team in the world. So I said we'd have a good understanding of where we're at as a team. At the end of this championship, and I think you can see how much work we've got to do. Is that task, that rebuilding task, bigger than you'd anticipated? Well, it, it doesn't matter whether, it, in terms of what I thought when it came, what what matters is where it is and where it is right now, and that that's it. And, and ultimately, when you when you play a game and you lose the 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 collision as badly did in defence, and giving the opposition opportunity, quick ball offloads. And you lose it in attack, where you're not able to generate quick ball. And it tends to these turnovers at the breakdown, especially in conditions like that. Then it's hard to get a foothold in the game, and that that was exactly the case today. Is that fixable in six months with the World Cup approaching? Well, we're, we're going to apply ourselves in every way, shape, or form to make sure we, we we give everything our best efforts, and that's that's what we're going to do. Um, now, what's clear, you, you saw their power. We whilst we had plans. In, in place to try and play in a certain way to, to to mitigate against that power advantage that they had. The one we didn't execute well enough and made errors, so weren't able to, to execute to execute those plans. And and secondly, they were so good that they they stopped us doing what we wanted to do, which is again I'll say credit to them for that. What we've got to do is go away and make sure that that we understand what went wrong and how we make sure that, that we're better in that challenge going forward. You made a big selection call before the game in starting Marcus Smith and dropping Owen Farrell. Do you stand by that or did that backfire? Well, I think at this stage, I think that wasn't the main bearing upon the game. I think the most main bearing on the game was around that contact area where you, you, you saw almost um, from those first couple of scores France and the first couple of breaks France made where they were able to dominate a tackle area and, and offload. And whilst we understood that was a major threat that was coming, and then off the back of that, so Aldrit carrying and offloading, and then DuPont playing off that quick ball, whilst we knew that was a threat, and we weren't able to stop it. Now, what we're going to do is we've got different threats next week, um, different threats at Ireland Post, but we've got to make sure that you don't allow the opposition to win momentum the way we allowed it today. And Ellis, can you sum up your emotions right now? Um. <clears throat> Emotionally, yeah, just pretty, pretty disappointed. Um, as Steve's alluded to, we've got a lot of work to do, so it's a bit of a. It shows us where we're at. Um, but yeah, emotionally, just, yeah, just quite disappointed. Thank you, Russ. We'll come to you. Ellis, just carrying on from there. Good evening. Um, how much belief do you have, hopefully, that this England team can? You know, overcome this big gap that there was today and get where they need to be. Yeah. Look, even when we went 20 points down and we were going in, in 20 points down at half-time, the, the message was always that we can believe. And I think the boys genuinely genuinely did believe that. As Steve said then, we, we lost the contact area. And at test level, if you lose the contact area, momentum, it's just a snowball effect. And you, you struggle, you start chasing your tail and struggle to get a foothold back in the game. Um, but I've, I've been in this situation before numerous times at, at club level with, with international, been through, been through rough spells and everyone writes us off and... Brilliant. We're, we're going to graph. We're going to work as hard as we can, and we'll see where we come out. And as he said before, we'll see where we're at in six months. But what we want to do is just get better for next week. Come on. Steve, hearing from Ellis there, the cohesion of the players, that togetherness is obviously there, which is massive for this rebuild, isn't it? After what happened today. Yeah, well, I think I think under, no one's under any illusions of what we've got to do, and I think we've been pretty upfront with that throughout. And today just shows just just 
exactly what you know, in stark reality what that's that's about. And whilst you, you, you know, we wanted to understand exactly what um, how the development of this team has gone, where we're at in comparison to the best teams in the world, and we found it against the second best team in the world, we found we fell considerably short. Um, that's the reality. Now our job is to make sure that we we can learn faster, improve faster than any other team. And your message to the fans leaving today would be what moving forward? Well, one, I'm always very grateful. The team is always really grateful for their support. And we are incredibly disappointed. We wanted to put on a really good performance for the team today. For, for Sorry, put on a really good performance for the, the supporters today. And we weren't able to do so. And that that hurts us. And I'm sure it hurts, it hurts the supporters as well. So. But, but one thing I certainly promise is we'll be, there'll be no shortage of hard work to find the, the improvement we need. And just finally from me, I know Ollie Lawrence seemed to go off with a possible knock. Any injury updates or any concerns for next week? The, all the players are still being assessed as we speak. OK, thank you. Thanks. We'll go to Nick just behind. Thank you. <coughs> Steve, I, I know you've been very honest about where you were when you took over and where you are now, but surely you hadn't anticipated a record home defeat. Well, I think the reality, whether anticipated anything or not before the game, you know, that's, that's it, it, do, it doesn't matter in terms of what the reality is right now. And we know where the reality is now. And, you know, if you, if you get overpowered in that way that we did today, both on um, attack and defence, if you get overpowered like that, then it becomes very difficult to win Test Match Rugby. And so we've got to make sure we find a way of, of ensuring that that doesn't happen again. Is it um, mostly about uh, systems and, and time and cohesion, or because you know you obviously spoke very glowingly about the personnel you have, and there's a lot of quality in the squad, isn't there? Yes, certainly. I, well, I think I go back again. That there is always a matter of understanding the systems and how you're trying to play. So that then, and you saw that today. They were really clear in how they wanted to play, how they're going about. It. They've been building that for over three years. And, and I think I always spoke in the week about you can see that development they've put in place over the years. So in, in, terms, of, in terms of how you use a, a, a World Cup cycle, you see just what they've done. It's, it's, it's actually it's tremendous. Now, well, that's not the situation we're in. We're in a different situation where we're trying to bring it together and find ways to, to mitigate the, the strengths of the opposition have over us. And they had a power advantage over us today as they have over most teams, and we weren't able to, to deal with that today. Now, what we could do, we would be better going forward. That's what we've got to be. And Ellis, um, you said, obviously, that, you know, it's kind of, let's see where we are, you know, like, you're happy for people to write you off and let's see where we are in sort of six, seven months or, or what have you. Um, what, what do you say as a group of players? Is that kind of, you know, straight after a match like this, is that something you sort of you touch on as a group? Or how yeah, I don't, I've, <clears throat> I don't think there's any point shouting and bawling and, and, and pointing the finger at people, I think. <clears throat> You, you win and lose as a team, it's, it's a collective performance. It doesn't matter what one individual's doing in, in any point of time. It's about winning together and losing together and, and ultimately <clears throat> fighting for each other and sh showing that how much it matters. And at times today, we, we, we lack that. So that's the brutal reality of it. And that, that's tier one rugby, you know. You, you get punished harshly. And I, I don't think anyone's under any illusions to, to anything different in that change room at the moment.